Are you someone who feels like they are still holding grudges or resentment towards people who have hurt them in the past? Or do you just really struggle to let go and forgive when you have been deeply hurt by someone? It's totally fair. I know I've struggled with this a lot in my own life, but on this video, I want to share with you five crazy, crazy, powerful life-changing tools that are going to help you not only forgive and let go of the people or the situations or the things that have hurt you, but also rise above this so that it is no longer something that's weighing you down every single day and in the back of your mind. Because as long as this is something that's carrying in your belief system, your mindset and your energy, then you are continuing to um, drain yourself basically by being focused and losing this energy. Think about it like this little toxic virus that's in your mind, body, or soul, and it's there all day, every day, just eating away at you, right? This is what anger, resentment, and unforgiveness is. It's that little virus that is doing you no good by being there, and it's actually taking away from your human experience, your joy, your love, your ability to be fully present and enjoy the moment because it's latched on so tightly. So, so make sure you stick around till the end because these tools that I'm sharing and number five is really going to be life-changing for you in breaking out of this place. So let's dive in. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Kara Michelle and I'm here to help you live your truth. And today that means forgiveness. Now, this is something that I have worked on very, very hard in my life. And by no means will I ever say I'm perfect at any of these things, but I do have a very powerful awareness and a toolkit around how to let go of these things. And because of my practices as a mindfulness teacher, really using mindfulness has helped me so much to detach from people or situations or emotions. So instead of getting fully encompassed in them like I used to, um, I really love the example that Osho uses, which is the way of the white cloud. And that is all about just being the white cloud, being the observer, like letting these things pass by you versus like clinging to it and then letting it become a storm cloud because you're fueling it with all this energy and then having this thing rain down on you and make you feel worse or angrier or anything. And then you're stuck in this dark cloud. So that's a little, little reminder for you, maybe a visual to help you realize, hey, maybe I am attaching to this storm cloud and it's not helping. So let's get out of that Let's get out of the storm and into the clear blue sky where you can just live your best life because yeah, that's what you deserve. So um, let me know in the comments below if you feel like you are currently holding some frustration, anger, or pain and you're, there's someone in your life who's coming to the top of your head right now as you are watching this video where you're like, ah, oh, that's someone I really haven't been able to forgive yet. You don't have to share who it is. You don't have to share what they've done, but just comment below and be like, yep, that's me. <laughs> um, so number one is the most powerful phrases for forgiveness and for bringing love and compassion into your life. Now, I want to preface this. I know some people are going to watch this and they're going to be like, I don't want to forgive or that person doesn't deserve my love. That person hurt me and they could have very, very deeply hurt you. I'm going to be sharing an example on number four. <laughs> I'm going to be sharing a really, really personal example of how some of these tools helped me with forgiving the people who were involved in my brother's death. This shit was heavy. I am not saying it's easy to forgive people. There were people who, um, for those who don't know, my brother had an allergic reaction to a prescription drug in 2011 and he passed away. And he was pressured by someone. And then there were also people afterwards in the friend group who were very um, disrespectful and not considerate, not compassionate and not taking any kind of responsibility or blame, even though they had pressured and been involved in this situation. That was some of the hardest stuff to go through. And I had so much hate and so much anger towards these people that I literally dreamt about beating the shit out of them every single night. Like I was a walking 
time bomb and I'm walking just like, you know, that anchorman, <laughs> I'm in a glass case of emotion. That was me for like years after. And I really didn't want to forgive. And I remember one of my mom's friends who had also lost her son a few years before was, um, was really helpful and supportive, but you know, she kept coming back to this forgiveness. And I was like, no, I'm not ready for that. I, these people don't deserve my forgiveness. Um, like they should be coming to me asking for forgiveness, all of these kinds of dynamics, right? Like I know what it's like to have that anger and pain towards someone, believe me. But I also have finally understood that what she was saying was right. And the longer I carried it, the more it was just affecting me and my life and, and my quality of life versus letting it go so that, you know, it doesn't mean I forget, but it just means I'm not sitting and stewing over it all day and I can go put my energy into better things. So number one, the most powerful phrases are in ho... Oponopono. Now, this is such a beautiful um, meditation practice. I will link, check out this video here later for a Ho'oponopono meditation that you can listen to. I'll also put it in the description box below. Now, these phrases are, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. The reason they're so powerful, they sound so simple, right? <laughs> the first time I heard it, I was like, that's not going to do anything. It was insane. I did this meditation towards these people that I mentioned just a few minutes ago. Um, I've done it towards some pain and sadness I had towards my dad and our relationship. I've done it with friends who I felt really hurt me. Um, I've ended up doing it with the intention of forgiving and letting go of things with other people and then all of a sudden being flooded with all these things that were kind of my own fault and my own perspective and view of the situation that I had clung to which kept me suffering so I ended up forgiving myself for the role that I played. This is why you are apologizing even if you feel you did nothing wrong in the situation with the person you're wanting to forgive you did play a role and you were responsible for some parts of it, some actions, some thoughts and the way you interpreted it, right? So if you're saying, I'm sorry, please forgive me, just consider that as like you're apologizing for the role that you played or you're apologizing for where maybe you didn't understand them or maybe you didn't always make the best choice either, right? Just taking some kind of accountability because as long as you're playing the victim and blaming everyone else, there's no moving forward. You're not taking accountability. And the biggest thing that will help you in all areas of your life is if you start to take accountability and responsibility for your life. You cannot sit and blame everyone else for where you are right now. Take responsibility and own up to the fact that you're still in control and it's up to you what you do with these things. So I'm sorry for the part that I played. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. Uh, this is really, really transformative. I will do more videos specifically on this at another time. Um, second one is empathy versus ego. Da -da -da. <laughs> Nobody likes to be told they're living from the ego, right? <laughs> I hated it. My mom always said that when I was younger. She's like, that's your ego. Uh, <laughs> she didn't sound like that. I hope she didn't hear me. Sorry, mom. <laughs> anyway, um, the ego keeps it focused on you. That's that victim mode that I just mentioned. So empathy opens it up to, to love, to compassion, to understanding that there is another person involved in the situation and that you cannot fully understand them or what they've been through. So ego is all about like, oh, why me? And like, how could they do this to me? And don't they know that they hurt me? You know, me, me, me. That's the ego. It's keeping you focused on yourself and focused on how you're the one who's been hard done by. Empathy opens it up so that you're going, you know what? Um, this is hurt people hurt people. So empathy opens it up to the fact that like you can never fully understand their life what they've been through, what they've experienced, what beliefs they have, 
you can never understand what makes them them and what makes them do what they did. If someone really badly hurt you, what happened to them to make them think that that was okay? Um, hurt people hurt people. I used this, this helped me with the people involved in my brother's death. I went like, not, this didn't happen immediately, definitely not. But like in retrospect and a few years after when I really was working on that forgiveness piece, um, I started to look at like, what was going on in their life and their mindset that they were so, like that they ended up on the path they ended up on and they were dragging other people down there with them. Like what had to be going on in this person's life for them to do that? For the first few years, I was just pointing fingers, thinking they were evil, hating them, being mad at everyone involved. But I wasn't taking any time to look at the situation and go like, inside those people, there is an inner child, there is a soul, there is um, the same being and the same thing that makes up me. And somewhere along the path, they just got really lost. Because if they were on the path, they wouldn't have been doing those things. So hurt people hurt other people. It's what they know. It's the path that they're kind of on. It's the thing, the patterns that they're stuck in. So taking that like third party observer view to put yourself in their shoes or to consider you're never going to understand what they were going through in order to do what they did. So separating, letting it go so that you can forgive and move forward instead of continuing to carry it. So number three is awareness of energy. Like I said at the very beginning, your lack of forgiveness is just you choosing to drink the poison every single day or choosing to have that toxic thing eating away at you, draining your energy all day, every day. So awareness of your energy means that you start to realize, look, my energy is precious. <laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the queen of that now. I'm like, hmm. Is that going to drain me? Nah, no time for that. Oh, is that like really what I want to spend my energy on? Mm -mm. So I'll, I'm not going. Like I can serve and guard my energy like there's no tomorrow because that is what makes me me. And my energy is detrimental to my own happiness, my own health, my well-being, my mindset, my life, everything. Like your energy is everything. So if you're not aware of where you're using it or draining it, and if you're not aware of the fact that you are wasting so much precious energy all day, every day by continuing to replay old stories and continuing to imagine the scenarios of the things you would say to this person or um, getting angry because they did things a certain way or didn't apologize, whatever you're wasting, you're wasting your time and your energy on that. Imagine all of the amazing things you could do with that time and... Um, like I have in this video here, your thoughts are energy and every day you are taking money or depositing money in an energy bank. So do you want to continue paying out your energy to this situation that's already passed that you can't control, These this person who's hurt you that you can't change? Do you want to keep paying them your money energy <laughs> or like your energy money? You know what I mean? Do you want to keep paying them that or do you want to just say, you know what? I'm cutting it off. I'm not giving you any more money. I'm not giving you any more energy. I'm not giving you any more time. There's no need for it, right? So using that as a reminder of like, this is a choice right now of where you're focusing your energy every single day. The more aware you are, the more you realize where you're draining it, the more you can heal, release, clear up around there. Number four is filling up with love. Yay. Um, love is the most powerful emotion. You may not want to send love to this person or the situation. Um, one thing I really like to remember is that I would not be here today and I would not be the person I am today had these things not happened. If all of the shitty things and if all of those people hadn't hurt me, there's no way I'd be here right now. Like, I wouldn't be doing what I do. I wouldn't have the knowledge, the understanding that I have, the compassion, the empathy, um, all of these things that came from those bad experiences. So when you fill up with love, I think it's part of a practice for yourself in realizing like, 
if you love who you are right now fully, then you can let go and forgive the people or things that hurt you along the way because they helped make you into who it is you are right now. And you love who you are right now. So filling up with love, check out this meditation here. It will be in the description box below. This is another very powerful meditation specifically for forgiving a specific person. I shouldn't have said specifically <laughs> already. Um, for for forgiving a specific person. This meditation will help you a lot. It's all about filling up with love for yourself, for um, those who you do love and appreciate, and learning how to kind of overflow that into the people who have even hurt you and letting go of the attachment, the anger, the resentment, the emotions that are the low vibe emotions because everything on the vibrational frequency scale that is like resentment, anger, guilt, shame, uh, grief, what, what are the other low vibe ones? Those are very low emotions. Those keep you very narrow minded, hence why it's like an upside down pyramid because the smaller you go the more negative you go the more narrow-minded you are you can't see anything positive when you're living in this space but when you get up into love which is like the one of the highest before like true consciousness <laughs> and awakening love brings you up into this beautiful place where you can live your life and you're so aware and you're just overflowing with joy, love, compassion, all these beautiful emotions every day. You are open to the abundance that is around you in life. You're open to receive. You're open to see things differently. Like everything is different when you're at the very top of this vibrational scale. But if you're staying down in here, then you're going to continue to feel those things and have a very narrow-minded focus which continues to then fuel what you're already thinking about. And it's this really vicious cycle of a negative feedback loop that keeps you stuck. So this specific meditation I've recorded for you guys, I learned it first in Bali a few years back. And that was one of the meditations I did towards the people involved in my brother and his death. And I, like I said, I would not have said I wanted to forgive these people. I really was like holding on to that anger and I wanted to be angry and I felt I had a right to be angry and all of those things that the ego tells us. But I practiced this meditation with them in mind and really, really helped me to empathize, to understand, to send them love and then to like separate, you know, cut the cords, let it go so that I could move forward. So that is going to be shared down below as well. Um, I also have a super quick story. One of my clients, we were talking about forgiveness the other day because she was finding herself really, really frustrated by um, a, an extended family member like and how much they were impacting her by how poorly they had treated her boyfriend and stuff like there was all this drama all this negativity and this wasn't a very nice person now it's very easy for me on the outside to say like look are they being like do you even want this person in your life like because they're not a good person so but it was kind of the ego coming in and saying like yeah but I want a, an apology and like we deserve an apology and blah 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 and so one of the things that we kind of talked about was like just if you need to just imagine that the apology comes like visualize feel like you've gotten it and you've received it and then feel like you've had that chance to say your piece and like separate those ties and the other thing we talked about was really just the fact that like like I've said on this video you're continuing to hold it and carry it and you're missing out on the present moment by doing so and you're basing your life on something you can't control because you can't control if this woman comes back and apologizes. But if you're going to sit and wait for that for years, like, you can't control it. So let's get in control of what you can control, which is yourself, always. This is why the inner work is so important because you can only control yourself. And if you're able to control your mind, your thoughts, your beliefs, your energy, your emotions and feelings, then you're not going to be wasting them on these external things. No matter how much they hurt you or anchor you, 
you can't control if that person comes back and apologizes. You can't control if they're extremely cold and angry and they're a hurt person who's now hurting you, right? Like you cannot control that. You can just control yourself. So take your power back and take that focus back into me uh, or into yourself. So comment down below. I'm ready to take my power back. I'm ready to take my power back because by forgiving, that is what you're doing. So claim it, let's do it. And make sure you check out these different meditations that will help you to take your power back right after the rest of this video. So last part, this is crucial. This is going to be key. This is going to help you so, so much with the forgiveness and the expansion is become your ideal self instead. Now this is your identity shift. Okay. Okay, so your identity shift. This is what is going to separate you from your small self and your big, expansive, ideal self. So your small self is this wounded child, this wounded person who is holding the anger, holding the hurt, holding the pain and going like, why me? And like, I don't deserve this. And how could they do this? And really, really attached to the pain. And this story, that's a very small person to be that's a very small story to be living in right now we want you to identity shift into your ideal self the version of you when you close your eyes and you picture who it is you want to be does that do this let's do this actually close your eyes and picture who it is you want to be and how you want to show up in the world does this version of you still carry the anger and pain and resentment towards this person or people who have hurt you or have they risen above it and are they free are they happy are they just living their day-to-day -day life without the pain or the heaviness of this situation or person you know your ideal self who you would love to be this person isn't that far away from who you are right now but this forgiveness is going to be a huge piece in helping you get there so just embracing this visualization right now of who it is you want to be and how free they feel because they're lighter they're not carrying this they're not spending their time and energy all day every day focusing on this <sighs> really breathing into that space for a second and you can open your eyes back up and now this is where we start to do the work of the identity shift your subconscious mind knows your current identity and your current story. This is the small story, right? As long as you're letting those old habits and patterns and this normal identity of what feels easy and normal to you, as long as that's ruling you, that's where you're going to stay. But if you practice and use this visualization, even if it's like for a minute or 30 seconds a few times throughout the day if you find yourself falling back into anger or resentment for this person um close your eyes and go okay what would my ideal self look like and how do i want to show up in the world how do i want to feel every single day and you feel how wonderful and like beautiful this is because your ideal self is free your ideal self isn't carrying that and holding on to it so tightly and this is going to help you align your energy, your emotions with what's possible for you. So you can basically like quantum leap into this reality. And Tony Robbins says that change happens in an instant. We all think that change has to happen over time and like all this time has to go by before you can change. But the final change <clears throat> actually shows up like instantaneously. It's the second you decide you're no longer settling and staying where you are. That's when change happens. So this could be your moment right now where you go, you know what? I'm tired of playing this story. I'm tired of letting the ego, the ego <laughs> control who I am, where I, where I spend my time and energy. I'm tired of staying in this victim energy and this why me and focusing on all the negatives. Like, I'm changing. I'm done. I am going to spend my energy 
focusing on what my ideal self looks like, how they show up in the world and live from that space every day. If you do this even for a few days, you're going to notice huge, huge shifts. So if you want help with that, make sure you check out and join the free five day release to thrive challenge linked down below. I've had women message me who have done this challenge, who were really struggling with a lot of different areas in their life. And because of the way it progresses and it identify, we identify, release, let go of these things that are holding you back and then start to align with your ideal self, your higher self. And that's really when you are able to shift fast into, okay, how does this person live? How do they think? How do they feel? How do they show up? What are they carrying? What do they tolerate and what do they no longer tolerate? Your standards immediately up level when you start to focus on living from the identity of your ideal self. So change happens now. It's possible. Forgiveness can start happening right now. Make sure you check out those links with the different meditations. I know they will help you so much. Please comment down below. Let me know your biggest takeaways from this video and let me know if this helped you. If it did, please make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn on the notification so you're first to be notified. And I will see you guys on the next video.